In our first lesson on separation techniques, we explored methods of separating mixtures based on particle size and density. Remember, a mixture is two or more substances that have been physically, and not chemically, combined, and can be separated through physical means. It is important to consider the properties of a mixture when applying separation techniques, as pure substances retain their distinct physical properties when mixed. In this lesson, we will focus on one separation technique that relies on differences in melting point and two separation techniques that rely on differences in boiling point. Before we begin, let's quickly revise the definition of melting point. Melting point is the temperature at which a substance melts or changes state from solid to liquid. This is also the temperature at which a substance freezes or changes state from liquid to solid. For example, when you place liquid water in a freezer, it changes into solid ice when it reaches zero degrees Celsius. On the other hand, when you heat ice to zero degrees Celsius, it melts into liquid water. So the physical changes of melting and freezing occur at the same transition temperature, which we refer to as melting point. Similarly, boiling point is the transition temperature between the states of liquid and gas. When liquid water is heated to its boiling point, it changes into a gas, or water vapour. Similarly, when water vapour is cooled to its boiling point, it starts to condense, or change from gas into liquid. Hence, the physical changes of boiling and condensation occur at the same temperature, which we refer to as boiling point. Thirdly, it is important to recognise that many substances can have their melting or boiling points below zero degrees Celsius. For example, nitrogen is a gas at room temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius. If we placed nitrogen gas in an extremely cold freezer, it would eventually condense into a liquid, then freeze into a solid. So how much do we need to cool it? Well, the boiling point of nitrogen is minus 196 degrees Celsius. So when it reaches this temperature, it changes state from a gas into a liquid. This is really cold and explains why liquid nitrogen is great for making ice cream. If we were to cool it even further, to minus 210 degrees Celsius, the liquid nitrogen would freeze into a solid. It's hard to imagine air turning into a solid since we never see solid air in everyday life, but it is possible in chemistry. Finally, the melting and boiling points of a solution are slightly different to that of the pure solvent. Remember, a solution is a homogeneous mixture in which the dissolved particles are extremely small. It occurs when a solute dissolves in a solvent. For example, water melts at 0 degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius. But if we dissolve sodium chloride in water, the resultant salt solution has a lower melting point and a higher boiling point than pure water. You might be familiar with this from experiments in year 9 or 10. In general, adding salt or sugar to water changes the temperatures at which the final solution melts or boils. For the HSC, you don't need to know any details, such as why or how this happens, but it will help you understand the examples in this video. Now, in some mixtures, the major differences between two or more pure substances are their melting points, and we can use this to separate the components. For example, let's consider a pot of melted butter and water. They form a heterogeneous mixture since they do not combine evenly. Now the melting point of water is 0 degrees Celsius, while the melting point of butter is 32 degrees Celsius. If we leave this mixture on the stove at 50 degrees Celsius, then both the butter and water will remain as liquids since 50 degrees Celsius is above their melting points. Then we place the pot into a fridge and leave it to cool to 4 degrees Celsius. The butter will cool below its melting point, so it will freeze into solid butter. 
In contrast, the water will remain as a liquid, since it doesn't freeze until it reaches zero degrees Celsius. This allows us to easily separate the solid butter from the liquid water. Using this same process, we can separate a wide variety of mixtures. Freeze concentration is a separation technique that depends on differences in melting points. Freeze concentration involves decreasing the temperature of a mixture below the melting point of only one component. The temperature of the mixture is reduced until one of the components freezes, while the other substances remain in a liquid state. The solid substance can then be removed by filtration. Freeze concentration is often used to increase the concentration of one miscible liquid in a mixture of miscible liquids. Remember, completely miscible liquids can be mixed in any proportion to form a homogeneous mixture, such as ethanol and water. Let's return to the pirate ship. Long Jane Silver is the ship's technician. Every fortnight, she collects fermented sugarcane juice from the pantry, then processes it to make rum. The fermented sugarcane juice is a homogeneous mixture containing ethanol, water, and sucrose, which is a type of sugar. Long Jane Silver pours fermented sugarcane juice into a crystallizer and begins the process of freeze concentration. As the temperature drops, both the sugar and water start to freeze into solid crystals, or sugar ice. This occurs because the mixture is colder than the combined melting or freezing point of sucrose and water. Meanwhile, the ethanol remains as a liquid, since it is not cold enough for the ethanol to freeze. Therefore, the ethanol becomes more concentrated. Long Jane Silver can then use filtration to remove the sugar ice and collect the concentrated liquid. However, it isn't possible to freeze all the water and sugar in one go, so she now has a solution containing a higher concentration of ethanol and a lower concentration of sugar water. Long Jane Silver has made rum. In some cases, the main difference between two or more components in a mixture is their boiling points. Remember, this is the transition temperature between liquid and gas. Many separation techniques rely on differences in boiling point, including evaporation, distillation, liquefaction, and fractional distillation. In this video, we will focus on evaporation and distillation. Evaporation is a separation technique where a mixture is heated so that one of the components evaporates. Usually, the mixture is heated to a similar temperature as the boiling point of one component, which turns into a gas, so that the process occurs faster. Evaporation is often used when there is a large difference between the boiling points of a soluble solid and a liquid in a mixture, allowing the solid to be collected. But be careful, the processes of evaporation and boiling are not the same. Boiling can only occur at or above a substance's boiling point, while evaporation can occur below a substance's boiling point. For example, pure water only boils when it reaches 100 degrees Celsius, but a puddle of water can evaporate on a warm day, even though its temperature stays below 100 degrees Celsius. When a liquid boils, it occurs rapidly and molecules throughout the entire liquid turn into gas bubbles. In contrast, when a liquid evaporates, it occurs slowly and only molecules on the surface turn into gas. Let's consider an example. Cookie is busy refilling the ship's salt shakers. They're all empty and Blackbeard hates bland food. But where do the pirates get their salt from? The sea, of course. Cookie has a large evaporating dish that he fills with seawater. Remember, seawater is a homogeneous mixture containing sodium chloride and water. Water has a much lower boiling point than sodium chloride. Since there is a large difference between their boiling points, he can evaporate the water to obtain pure salt. One way he could do this is by leaving some seawater under the sun in the evaporating dish. 
Cookie places a black cloth under the solution to help absorb the sun's heat. It warms up to about 30 degrees Celsius, and even though this is lower than the boiling point of water, some of the water evaporates. After a long time, he is left with salt crystals. However, Cookie doesn't want to wait ages until he can collect the salt, so instead he boils the seawater. When this happens, the water molecules change state from liquid to gas and evaporate. Additionally, this temperature is much lower than the boiling point of sodium chloride, so it does not evaporate. Instead, salt crystals start to form. Since salt water has a slightly higher boiling point than pure water, he needs to heat it to about 100.6 degrees Celsius. After 30 minutes, Cookie is finished and he can fill up the salt shakers. Distillation is another way to separate two substances by their boiling points. Distillation is a separation technique where a liquid mixture is boiled so that one component turns into a gas and is then cooled back into a liquid and collected in a separate container. The other components of the mixture remain in the original container as they do not evaporate. Usually, a condenser is used to cool the gas. This is a piece of laboratory equipment that is typically made of two glass tubes. Cold water enters the bottom of the condenser, flows through the outer tube, and exits the top as warm water. The gas cools as it passes through the inner tube and condenses into a liquid. Distillation is often used to separate two miscible liquids if there is a large difference between their boiling points. It can also be used to separate mixtures of soluble solids and liquids. If you recall from our lesson on homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, Blackbeard used distillation to collect pure water from seawater, which is a homogeneous mixture of salt and water. Remember, the boiling point of water is much lower than the boiling point of sodium chloride. Blackbeard heats the seawater to 110 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough for the water molecules to change state from liquid to gas. Next, the water vapour passes through a condenser, where it cools down and changes back into a liquid. Then, he can collect the distilled water by placing a container underneath the condenser. Blackbeard is left with solid salt crystals in the original container, since it wasn't hot enough for the salt to evaporate. Now, let's step back for a moment and compare the last two separation techniques, evaporation and distillation. When Cookie evaporated seawater, he was left with salt crystals. Meanwhile, when Blackbeard distilled seawater, he obtained both salt crystals and liquid water. Both of these processes caused water to change state from liquid to gas. Cookie let the water vapour escape because he only wanted to collect the salt. However, Blackbeard's goal was to collect pure water, so he passed the water vapour through a condenser and cooled it back into a liquid. This is the main difference between evaporation and distillation. In general, we use distillation if we want to collect the more volatile substance, which is a fancy way of saying the substance that evaporates or the substance with a lower boiling point. In contrast, we use evaporation if we only want to collect the more stable substance or the substance that doesn't evaporate. Let's revise the separation techniques that we've covered in this lesson. In the HSC chemistry course, you will need to know a range of separation techniques, the physical properties that they rely on, and when to apply each one. Freeze concentration relies on differences in melting point. It involves decreasing the temperature of a mixture below the melting point of only one component. Separation techniques that depend on differences in boiling point include evaporation, distillation, liquefaction, and fractional distillation. We'll discuss liquefaction and fractional distillation in the third video on separation techniques.
Evaporation is a separation technique where a mixture is heated to the boiling point of one component, which evaporates. Distillation is a separation technique where a liquid mixture is boiled so that one component turns into a gas and is then cooled back into a liquid and collected in a separate container. A condenser made of two glass tubes is used to cool the gas. This is used when there is a large difference between the boiling points of a mixture's components. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on chemistry, check out our third video on separation techniques.